The thumbnail of this video is going to be a that giveaway, what this video is about. So there is a new functionality which is coming in the EVLink application, and that's CarPlay support. And before I continue, just two caveats. So at the moment, this is only coming to the iOS version. Maybe there is going to be the same functionality available in Android, but uh, I don't have any information on that at the moment. Also, while it is coming in the, in the future, I have a test version uh, just for testing. And also this requires the EV-Link advanced plan. So this is the paid subscription, which is uh, about 10, 10 bucks a year at the moment. So you need to have that in order to use this new functionality. And the functionality is very simple. So this is my CarPlay screen in my car. So now you can see all my applications that are supported by CarPlay. And if I go, now I have a link for EV-Link. And if I select it, then basically I have access to selected manual scenes that I can uh, trigger from here. So let's say I have a scene to, you know, coming home where uh, the lights come on and the garage door opens and that sort of stuff. So I can just trigger it from here. But I can uh, also trigger another scene, which is leaving home. And let's say that, you know, turns off all the lights and maybe triggers the garage door again just to close it as I am driving out. So it's a very simple functionality. But on the other hand, it is very easy to configure and it doesn't take you a lot of uh, time and effort just to look at the screen to select it. Because obviously you won't be you won't have access to control all your devices. You don't have to, you know, flick through a list. So very targeted functionality, just a selected number of uh, scenes that you can control from here, which I think it's a perfect functionality for a CarPlay integration because you want a minimal functionality that you can control without uh, spending too much time looking at the screen. So you can select any manual scenes and you can configure them to be available in your CarPlay screen. And let me show you how the new functionality looks like in the EVLink application. So this recording is coming from my iPhone. I have the EVLink app running and I click on the profile button and then you see I have a new feature here, well, a new option here which says CarPlay and Advanced. So this is why I was also saying that it needs the uh, uh, advanced plan, so the paid subscription plan, but uh, I have that, so I have this option uh, appearing. And if I click on that, then I have this, uh, you know, small screen where I can select the uh, manual scenes that I want to be included in the CarPlay screen. And this is what we have seen in my car as well. So all I can do here is I can click on edit and I have a couple of manual scenes and I just selected three of them to be available in CarPlay. So you can see that I can add the doorbell as well and I can also remove it. So it's basically you have to create the scenes first and then you come here and you have to add them. So I'm not going to make any changes here. I'm just going to go back and you know just as a reminder so how we can create a manual scenes you come to the scene screen you click on the plus button and it is manual <clears throat> because the trigger is tap to perform so obviously you tap on it and then the um, you know evening does what it needs to do and in the actions I mean Ideally, what you would do here is you would list a, uh, like a list of different devices that should trigger something. So maybe what I can do, I can have the um, so one of the devices that you can use for controlling the garage motor is the CH4 uh, Pro, which I just have to find in the list. So that's my CH4 Pro. And let's assume that the uh, garage motor is created to channel one. So I can come here and I configure the channel one to be on. And of course, the garage motors usually require a small impulse. So what you would do is you would uh, configure this channel one to have like a half a second inching. So you switch it on here and then it would automatically switch off after like half a minute. So that's going to open the garage door. Oops, go back. And then you can add additional things. So for example, I want a, um, you know, some of my lights to be turned on. So let's say uh, this Zigbee Basic is controlling some lights. So uh, the garage door comes on, uh, these lights come on. Maybe I want some additional light as well. So I can click on more button. Um, and uh, I mean, I can just select whatever. Maybe this uh, TX uh, light switch has a couple of uh, indoor or outdoor lights connected. So I want channel one to be on and maybe I want also channel two be, to be on. Okay, and I save this. So two or three lights come on and maybe what I can also do is uh, I know that I want like, for example, a five minute delay. 
because then some of the lights would be like outdoor lights and I can just turn them off, uh, turn them off. So maybe the Zigbee basic is some outdoor light or something which uh, lights the dry, uh, driveway. So after five minutes, I can turn it off. And that's it. So if I just go back, so these are my actions. So garage door opens, a Zigbee basic. Oh, it's okay. That was Zigbee basic. So maybe I can do Zigbee. Uh, basic here as well but I guess you get the idea so you can have a couple of lights on maybe you can add the delay and then turn a couple of lights off and then once you have done that you can save it and then uh, I'm not sure if I called the previous one arriving home so I just did arriving home too and you can put an icon and yeah you can save it done and now I can head back to my CarPlay option and I can edit. So the new one just appeared. So I can do this one as well. And now if I go back to my car, I would have this new uh, option as well in my CarPlay screen. And since we were talking about garage door openers, I just want to come back to this uh, question, like what uh, devices that you can use uh, to operate uh, garage doors. So most of the garage doors, uh, require a dry contact which means that they have two terminals and if you close or if you connect those two terminals then the garage door goes up or you know stops or comes down so this is why they are usually wired to like a, a momentary switch or a push button and I think those are the most common and for those the option is really is the CH4 Pro and at the moment, uh, the CH4 Pro is released free. I have the release 2 version. I made a review, video, a review video on that, but it's pretty much the same thing. The only thing with the CH4 Pro is, uh, well, as you can see, it is, um, well, obviously not the cheapest uh, Sonoff device. And it has four channels, but for the garage door, you only need one. So obviously there is an extra investment, but you can use the other three channels to control something else in the garage. Or maybe if you have two garage doors, then well, right away you can control both of them with a single CH, uh, 4CH Pro and you still have two more outputs for lights or whatever that you want to control. So that's one. Uh, the other option, which to be honest, is not really an option, is the uh, Son of S SV. I, hasn't, I didn't do a review on that. I don't have this product. The problem is that it is not, it is just low voltage relay, but it still doesn't create a dry contact. So it would be useful if you have a special garage door, which instead of a dry contact, it requires, for example, 24 volts or 12 volts as a signal input, because you can drive this from five to 24 volts, and then it outputs, uh, well, the same voltage that you are using to drive the, uh, the one. So as I said, uh, the most things that I have seen garage door openers, they don't wouldn't work with this. So for CH Pro, or the last option, and to be honest, I haven't even known that this product existed, is this RE5 5V1C. It's a simple five volt relay board, and uh, so yeah, and this is cheap. Uh, what is it? One piece? Yeah, for uh, sorry, five bucks. Or you can get cheaper if you buy multiple one and that's basically a just a relay and then all the other electronics which are required to drive it the only thing the well it's not really an issue with it but um, as you can see you have to solder your connections or your wires straight into it and you need a 5 volt supply so obviously you can get 5 volts if you just buy a usb cable and then you strip it you cut the uh, let's say the micro usb or the usb c connection at the end and you can get the uh, the 5 volts uh, from that cable and also you have to solder your wires here so this is more like a diy option but that's definitely something that you can just buy and you don't really have to do any modifications it's definitely cheaper than a 4ch pro but if you can use the other free outputs on something else then that 4ch pro is not that expensive so i think that will be all for today if you are interested in any of the products that I mentioned, then the links are going to be down in the video description below. If I hear anything on when this is going to be released, I will add them to the description as well. And, and I would also add a pinned comment uh, under the video. So if you are watching this a little bit later, then it might have some additional information down below. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.